or its expendability. And in your viewpoint, what, uh, what's the basis for why, especially the, the media in, in the West, uh, have such a blind spot toward a fair portrayal of the situation in Israel? And, and how does that relate to your overall theme of this book of empire? Mm. And, and of the uh, and the, uh, the importance of understanding empire in the world today. I think I started to realize when I was when I was first sent to Vietnam as a foreign correspondent, um, and my naivety started to um, crumble pretty quickly. That that basically the main so what we call the mainstream media that amorphous thing uh, is is an extension of great power. And yes, there are exceptions, and very fine exceptions, but we've seen that time and time again. And with the, especially in the United States, with such uh, an extraordinarily powerful, vociferous groups supporting Israel, associating any criticism of Israel with, with uh, anti-Semitism, and I've been on the, I've been on the tail, at the tailwind of this, with massive email campaigns and so on. It's very intimidating. It's worked on the BBC to a great deal, uh, to a great extent, rather. Uh, when, 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 I think when you have that, then the, the media will then revert back to what it sees um, interesting as the center. Well, it's not the center. It's really as an, ex an extension, an expression of... Uh, of, 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 of government and power. Yes, personalities are criticized. Uh, George W. Bush is fair game, probably now. Certainly, finally, Tony, Tony Blair is. But the system that produced them is not. We're talking to award-winning filmmaker and author John Pilger. His latest book is called Freedom Next Time. And the documentary, uh, the film that he is just about to be released in the United States, is called The War on Democracy. When we come back from break, we'll play a clip for you. Stay with us. Muslim Gauze here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Our guest today is the famed filmmaker John Pilger. He's just come from Britain. His latest film that is being released, and I correct myself, not in the United States, but in, in Britain, and we'll talk about why in just a minute, is called The War on Democracy. This is a clip. America will not impose our own style of government on the unwilling. Our goal instead is to help others find their own voice. In 1998, Hugo Chavez was elected president of Venezuela. His social reforms provoked hysterical attacks. By anyone. He is being taken prisoner. This is a coup. In April 2002, his government was overthrown. We suspend the president and all members of the Supreme Court. Democracy, democracy. This is a dictatorship. Chavez is a rightful president. They took me away. I thought I was going to die. A huge public outcry saw him restored to power. It's very important to understand that the United States did not support that coup. Not support that coup. 
never believe anything until it's been officially denied. We'll intervene whenever we decide it's in our national security interest to intervene. And if you don't like it, lump it. Since 1945, the United States has attempted to overthrow 50 governments. Isn't history taught in the classroom about the role of the U.S. government in human rights violations? The doctrine that was taught was that you use virtually any method necessary to get what you want. Torture and killing. Kill them. Killing. Get used to it, world. We're not gonna put up with nonsense. Now the people of Latin America are fighting back. I go around Latin America. There is a fervor sparking off everywhere. This is the United States flag. We are against this. Pilger unearths the filthy truth and tells it as it is. This isn't just Chavez's struggle, it's our struggle. The truth in Pilger's hands is a weapon used against evil and injustice. The American empire has reached its end. The Great Awakening has arrived. The war on democracy, just a trailer of that film that is being released in Britain by Lionsgate. John Pilger, talk about the film and then why we're not seeing it here. Well, the film, uh, The War on Democracy, uh, is the first one I've done for cinema. It'll be shown on television later. Uh, it opens in the UK on the 15th of June. Uh, it's set in Venezuela, Bolivia, Chile, Central America, and here in the United States. And it really is, I suppose, the story of our empire, again, uh, uh, in the 21st century. But it's the story of the backyard. It's the, the story of that whole neglected terrain of empire. And it's a very positive story because it, it charts the rise of popular movements uh, throughout Latin America in Bolivia, uh, in uh, Argentina, in Ecuador, and in Venezuela. And the meaning for democracy with these popular movements how they are very different from the representative democracy that we like, that we subscribe to in this country and in Britain, but that how the grassroots are becoming part of a new movement and how this threatens the United States. There's something of a deja vu of Nicaragua, where I also made a film in the early 1980s. Uh, and, but that was a small, isolated country of three million people. This is, these are some very powerful countries, especially Venezuela, which is a supplier, of course, of much of the United States' oil. Uh, so it, it's, it, it's, <laughs> it's really saying the empire fights back. Um, and it, did you interview Chavez? Uh, yes, I did. I spent several days with Chavez. Um, and uh, I don't n normally uh, interview serving politicians. Um, uh, and I found him refreshing, I have to say. He answered all my questions. Uh, he didn't demur from anything when I asked him about the poverty remaining in, in Venezuela. He, um, I found him a man of extraordinary good humor. What was interesting about him is that he would go to I mean, he's, he, his energy is limitless. He would, he would do something like uh, 10 or 12 major meetings around the country a day, and he would turn up carrying uh, a pile of books of Victor Hugo, Orwell, uh, uh, Dickens, and he would, um, he, he would read them to the audience, and he would relate what these classics were saying about ordinary people. It is quite extraordinary to see this process of education and I, th I think it ran two ways. It was about the people but it was also himself. Um, we, we like to see all these movements in terms of single personalities. But there's no doubt in my mind that Chavez's great engine is, is a grassroots movement and without them, he would not be powerful. I'd like to ask you,